I'm David Scadden. I'm the blood guy. And uh, as Stephen, Steve Hyman once called me, I'm the lunch pail carrying hematologist of the group. So um, thank you for taking the time today. I want to tell you about things that we think are opportunities in the blood. The blood is, as you know, one of the most regenerative tissues of your body. You're about halfway through the day of making 100 to 300 billion new blood cells that you have to do every day. To put that in some perspective, that's about the number of stars in the Milky Way. So you're making a galaxy, you can have that extra cookie at dinner. But uh, this is a, a tissue that in its normal capacity to regenerate has also indicated to us that there are indeed cells you can harness and use for therapy. And as you well know, stem cell transplants of the blood have been something that have been very transformative, brought people really back from the precipice of death uh, in a very successful way and do so at about tens of thousands of patients per year. And some of them are very public about the process. And we know, for example, from the experience of one of our uh, broadcasters that she went through a transplant and she literally had a fatal disease that she now has recovered from and continues to live a very vigorous life. And it's a very durable type of therapy. Here's a woman who 50 years ago had her transplant and is now in this picture reunited with her physician. So this is something that works. It's a regenerative therapy of clearly demonstrated potency. The problem is it's only used in about a third of the people who, like these individuals, are at that point of needing it because they have such an extreme disease. And part of that is because while we know that the cell works, being able to get it in and do so with a kind of safety that's needed to make this more commonly used has been very restrictive. So even though it's currently very useful, it's really largely regarded as something that's at the end of care. It's really sort of the medical last rites for people who have devastating disease, particularly malignant disease. And we know that if we can make that safer, we can have an impact that far extends beyond its current use. So for example, it's a very powerful therapy for conditions like this one, which is a young girl, just on the left, who has sickle cell anemia. And she had major complications from this, which as you may know, is one of the great scourges of our society. People who have this disease when they are a child are really essentially condemned to a life of misery. Um, it is something that we spend billions of dollars a year, a year trying to control the symptoms regarding, and yet we know how to cure this problem. The cure is a stem cell transplant. There are 100,000 people with this disease in the U.S. We've transplanted probably less than 100. And part of it is because of the difficulty of making this more broadly useful and safer. We also know that there are conditions for which modifying cells can be useful. So genetically modifying her own cells could have potentially done, been uh, very useful for Jocelyn, but also modifying cells in conditions of things like HIV disease. So here's one person, Tim Brown, out of 33 million people who have been infected with HIV disease who's been cured. He's the only person. He was cured by a stem cell transplant. So again, it has potential to be extraordinarily powerful and unlike all the other people with HIV disease, Tim does not take any medicines. He has a durable cure from his stem cells. The other possibility is to use it not just for replacement of abnormal cell populations, but potentially also to modulate the immune system in ways where it is currently so problematic and where we typically think of the diseases in terms of the organs affected. So for example, for this woman, she has multiple sclerosis. She had terrible multiple sclerosis. And so she underwent a stem cell transplant. And she went from being wheelchair bound to now skiing and kayaking. It's a possibility that may be something that we should, if we can figure out ways to do this in a better, safer way, can extend this kind of really transformative approach to people with a broad range of diseases, some of which we distinctly think of as of the blood, but others which are regulated and ultimately have their foundation in the blood, but which we typically think of in other organs. So why is it that we don't have the ability to move this forward? And part of it is because it was originally used in the setting of extremists, of people who had very advanced cancers. And so all of the, the associated treatments beyond that of the cell have largely been stuck in time. And we think there are ways in which you can take what is a sequential series of steps that needs to be take, taken for the uh, use of this of transplant and really modulate them. So what we're trying to do is to really focus on three of the major components of this. One is 
To get stem cells, we used to have to go to the operating room. Now we just have to give people treatment, but we give that treatment for over a week. It causes a lot of symptoms. They then go to the blood bank. They have erratic responses. We have discovered a way in which you can give people a treatment, and 15 minutes later, you can get the same number of cells that you could get after treating a person for a week. That totally changes the equation for the donor. It's also something that gives us a cell population that ends up being the overachievers of the stem cells. These cells perform much better than the stem cells that are obtained by other means. The other is people at Novartis, under, under the, uh, the, the wisdom and vision of Mark, have focused on trying to break the problem of expanding stem cells, and they did it. 40 years of trying, others have failed, Novartis did it, and provided that breakthrough technology that we think can be further advanced to allow us to take a modest number of cells and expand them up to the, to the amount we need for uh, individuals who could get this therapy. And finally, when we give a stem cell transplant, if we were to infuse any of us with blood stem cells, they would be washed out. They don't stick around. You have to make room at the inn. And the way we've done that typically is to give radiation or chemotherapy. And those have devastating collateral damaging effects that persist for life in people. But we figured out a way and recently published where you can take a more targeted approach, wipe out the existing stem cells, the animals that have gotten this, tolerate that extremely well, you can infuse the new cells anywhere over a course of about uh, 10 days, and they completely recover, and in animals with sickle cell anemia, that's completely gone. So if we can focus innovation in these areas, we think we can make a difference for transplant, and I think we all have a stake in this. Because this is actually recent data that says all of us, while we're making those new cells, are accumulating ones with genetic injury. And those genetic injuries occur in about 10% of us by the time we're 60, more modified versions of this analysis have said that it's actually more like 95% of us. If you have one of those mutations, you have a high risk of developing a hematologic cancer. You also, interestingly, have not just a problem with the blood, but the other tissues affected by the blood. And so you have an increased risk of about 50% above that who don't have the mutations, so of having a heart attack or of having all-cause mortality. So this ends up being a problem that we, at this point, have absolutely no therapy for. The possibility is you could use transplant to do it. So if all this plays forward in the way we hope, you might be able to take your long lunch break, get your cells stored, end up having them, maybe even small numbers in a bank, maybe we can expand them if needed, be able to give people a targeted therapy, they can come back in and get that treatment, and potentially be able to do something that I would call the equivalent of the oil change. Get your oil change and get back to work. That's what we hope we'll be able to do. So thank you.